the brioche stitch makes a uniquely textured fabric that's great for all sorts of projects, but I personally love it for hand towels. It's thick and squishy, and when paired with a nice cotton yarn, it absorbs water really well. Use this one in your kitchen or in your bathroom, or just make one for both if you can decide. The step-by-step -step tutorial is coming up. To make it a little quicker and easier for you to see how this stitch has worked, I'm going to start off with a swatch first, but I'll move into the full-sized hand towel a little later so you can see what that looks like. For this one, we'll work the long tail cast on, and if you're already familiar with how to do that, go ahead and cast on 71 stitches. For everyone else, go ahead and get yourself a nice long tail. Remember, I'm making a swatch, so make sure your tail's much longer than mine and place the yarn over the needle and gather it in your hands like this. Then swing the needle down and grab the loop on your thumb. Swing it up and grab the loop on your index finger. Then release the thumb loop over the tip of the needle. That's it. Now you'll keep going until you have 71 loops on your needle. By the way, I'm sure you've noticed I'm working with double pointed needles at the moment. Honestly, that's because I'm working with a swatch, so it's plenty long enough. And because they're a little shorter, they're just much easier for me to use while filming. I actually worked the full project on a pair of circular needles because that's what I prefer using. And you'll see those when we get to the bind off. Okay, when you have 71 stitches cast on, go ahead and flip your work and just pull the tail out of the way so you don't accidentally knit with it. And go ahead and knit the first stitch. Now you'll always knit the first stitch of every row so you can just commit that to memory. And here's where the repeat for this row begins. Pull the yarn forward and insert your needle like you're gonna purl, but instead just slide it over. Then with the yarn still forward, knit the next stitch. And repeat, pull the yarn forward, slip one purl wise, and knit the next. Your second to last stitch should be a slip one purl wise for this row. And then you'll knit the last stitch with the yarn forward. Again, your last stitch will always be a knit throughout this pattern. Then flip your work and we'll start row three, which is really similar to the last row. We're just changing a couple things at the beginning and the end. Now for this one, you'll knit the first stitch. Again, we're always doing that. And next we have a brioche knit where it looks like there are two loops there. Go ahead and knit that. Now this is called a brioche knit or you'll see it as BRK in the pattern. Then our regular repeat begins. Pull the yarn forward, slip one purl wise and BRK. And keep going with that repeat. Now, if you're wondering about the supplies I'm using, or if you wanna see the instructions for yourself so you can follow along that way, well, I have all of that information and more in the pattern itself. Now, you can view the pattern for free on my website, or if you prefer to have a copy in hand to print or save for later, you can pick up the PDF from my shop. I'll have a link to both of those options in the description below. All right, this time your second to last stitch will be a BRK. Just work it like normal and knit the last stitch. 
So when you're working with the brioche stitch, you'll have alternating stitches on the needle. That's a good way to visually check that you're on the right track. By the way, try to say brioche stitch together. I'm finding it really difficult. Okay, so rows two and three make up the repeat for this pattern. Super simple, right? It'll take several rows for the pattern to really show, and when it does, it'll look something like this. It's super stretchy. It's one of the stretchiest stitches I know in knitting, and it has great texture. It's nice and thick and squishy, and honestly, you just have to feel it for yourself. So you'll continue with your repeat rows two and three, until your work measures about 24 inches from the cast on edge, or until you have at least two yards of yarn left. Now that part is very important and you'll see why later. When you do, you wanna make sure you complete a second row and you'll pick up your bind off on the third row. Remember the third row is where your second stitch is a slip one purl wise. Okay, so for the bind off, knit the first stitch as usual. And when you would normally slip one purl wise, instead you're gonna purl this stitch. Then pass the first loop over the last. And knit your BRK. And pass the first loop over the last. Then the repeat begins, purl the next stitch. And yes, old habits die really hard here. Don't slip it like you'll probably see me do three or four times. Always purl those stitches and then pass them over. Now keep going with that repeat until only one loop remains on your needle. Then fasten off by pulling the tail through the last loop. So I played a little game of yarn chicken here because I didn't leave at least two yards of yarn and I just barely won. That's why my tail is so short here and that's why I encourage you to not start your bind off unless you have at least two yards of yarn left. All right, now all that's left to do is weave in the ends. That's all for now, friend. I hope this project sparks some inspiration for other ways you can use this stitch. I know my husband has been begging me to make a blanket out of this, so you just might see that in the future too. Now, if you wanna learn more about this stitch so you can incorporate it into other projects, I have just a dedicated stitch tutorial and page on my website where you can learn about the multiple and how you can incorporate this into a project of your own. I'll have a link to that page in the description as well. Now before I go, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and sticking with me to the end of the tutorial here. Your support watching, subscribing, liking, and sharing these projects with your friends. Well, I know those things don't seem like much, but that support keeps this channel alive and thriving. And to be honest, there's no way I could keep doing what I'm doing without it. Now, if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed yet, I would love to have you part of this community. I make crochet and knitting projects like this all the time, and I'd love to keep inspiring you to make something that'll make you happy. Happy knitting, and I'll see you in the next one.